Hi guys, this is Mrs. Gassler, and in this video we're going to talk about models of bonding. And we're going to show what happens when we form ionic bonds and covalent bonds. Um, you're going to need some Cornell paper, and we're going to be drawing electron dot structures. And if you need a refresher, we did that in Objective 7 of Unit 5. So if you want to go and review that, um, otherwise we'll be talking about it here. Okay, um, so we're going to fill this out here. Uh, first, name, date, and class period here, and our topic is models of bonds. We have one essential question that we're going to answer in a variety of ways. How are electrons involved in bonding? And so to begin with, let's talk about why atoms bond. Now you might remember there's that thing called the octet rule, which we talked about when we talked about ions forming, which was just a couple of objectives ago. And the gist of it is that atoms are most stable with a full valence level. And that generally means eight electrons. The exceptions are um, on that first row, hydrogen and helium are happy with two, and um, lithium, beryllium, and boron have an easier time just losing their electrons to go down to two than getting all the way up to eight. So in order to get those full valence shells, um, there's two ways that they do it. And they either form an ionic bond or they form a covalent bond. And which one they form depends on how many valence electrons they have. And um, we talked about how to identify what kind of bond forms. And now we'll kind of understand a little bit more why um, metals and nonmetals form an ionic bond and nonmetals form covalent bonds. And we're going to talk about ionic bonds first. Okay, so this is kind of a refresher from the ions um, objective. Metal atoms um, can't. They cannot fill their valence level. They've only got one, two, maybe three valence electrons. They needed eight. They can't do it. So they lose their electrons. And when they lose their electrons, that makes them positively charged because they have less negatives, which makes them a cation cation, which is positive. Now the nonmetal atoms, um, they can fill their valence level, and so they gain electrons to become an anion, which is po uh, negative. When they have those extra negative charges, they become an anion. Now, interestingly enough, those metal atoms are giving their nonmetal, um, or those metal atoms are giving their electrons to the nonmetal. So our electrons are going from the metal atom to the nonmetal atom. That's where those electrons are gained from. And we end up with a positive and a negative um, ion, and those guys attract because opposites attract, and that gives you an ionic bond. They're sticking together a little bit like magnets. Magnets are a different reason, but if you had positive and negative charges, um, that's what would happen. And so I call this one the give and take bond because one atom gives and another atom takes, and then they get bonded together. Okay, so when we model these bonds and what's happening to, to those electrons, we're going to draw it out just a little bit here. And so um, I've got two examples that we'll do. I'm not sure if we'll do one at a time, um, and then we'll, we'll go through the steps. Okay, so the first step is to draw the dot diagrams. Now, sodium is Na. It's in the first column, so it has one dot. Fluorine is F. It's in the second one from the end, which makes it have seven dots. Now, fluorine has seven, it needs one. Sodium has one to get rid of. How convenient. So sodium, what is going to happen is we're going to just relocate those electrons. So there it goes. Here you go, fluorine there. Take my electron. That's what sodium says, you know, if sodium could talk. Um, so we don't need any extra atoms. We'll need some in the magnesium nitrogen one. So now what we're going to do is we're going to redraw it with the charge. Sodium lost one electron, so it becomes plus one, and fluorine gained one electron, and so it now has a minus one charge. And so then all we have to do is organize these guys, and this one's pretty easy. We just write them next to each other, so I'm just going to draw all those little dots. Notice how I'm keeping them in pairs here, just like when we were drawing the electron dot diagram. So there's my plus one and there's my minus one and that's all I have to draw for my electron dot structure for an ionic compound. Now let's try magnesium. Magnesium's not going to be quite as easy. 
because magnesium is Mg, which is in the second column, and it has two dots. And nitrogen is N. It's in uh, one, two, three, four over, which means it's eight, seven, six, five dots. So magnesium says um, it, it has two to get rid of, but nitrogen only uh, needs three. So we're going to need another magnesium. And so now we have four electrons to get rid of. But nitrogen can only take three, so let's add another nitrogen. And then we're going to need another magnesium here. This is where it gets, maybe I should have added more room. Let me move that out of the way here. Okay, so I got to take from my magnesiums and give to my nitrogen. So I'm going to draw some arrows here. Here's one for you, one for you. I'm pairing them up, okay? Do you see this pair? Here, you can put this in the blank spot. Remember when we park the electrons, they don't want to be next to each other, so they kind of spread out there. Okay, so all three of my magnesiums have been able to give up all six of their electrons. All two of my nitrogens got all six electrons that they needed, and so now I'm, I'm good. So when I write them with the charges, I'm going to write Mg plus 2, Mg plus 2, Mg plus 2. I had three of those and they all got a plus 2 charge. Now my nitrogens gained 3, so that's minus 3, minus 3. Now you can check and make sure you've done this correctly because if all these positives and negatives add up to be 0, you are right. 1, minus 1, 0. Check. 1, 2, 3, let's see, 2, 4, 6, uh, minus 3 is 3, minus another 3 is 0. Check. Okay, does it equal 0? Then you're right. Okay, if those charges equal 0, then you're right. Okay, so uh, to write this now, when I organize these, my positives don't stick to each other. They stick to my negatives. So I'm going to kind of alternate in between here. So I'm going to put an N with a minus 3 and an N with a minus 3 and my magnesium with a plus 2 in between them like this. So the plus sticks to the minus, sticks to the plus, sticks to the minus, sticks to the plus. So there we go. That's what that would look like for this one. So I'm going to draw, let's see, I'll draw a nice circle around here and a nice circle around here because that's my end result. That's what I want to have written down when I'm done. So that's not too bad. Um, these are pretty ugly and they can get a little annoying, but these, remember, all you're doing is drawing where the, where the electrons go. It's important to draw an arrow because something else is going to happen in a covalent bond and I don't want you to get confused.